Mom and I were made from the same mold. The same straight brown hair, the same nearsighted brown eyes, the same physique. Mom was my mainstay. Despite all my scholastic achievements and student activities, I was shy and insecure, and she was always there for me. Mom taught social studies at my high school, so all my friends knew her and loved her too. I was 15 when Mom was diagnosed with lupus. She was hospitalized for five months, and she recovered. She returned to teaching, and all seemed normal. A year later, she caught a cold that developed into pneumonia, and within a week, she was gone. All the questions I had about Mom's life and feelings, about my own blossoming womanhood, about trivial things like recipes for Christmas cookies or her lemon meringue pie, now none of those questions would be answered. I was deeply sad and alone. I changed and became bitter and sarcastic. My heart was armored with grief and guilt. I was haunted by images of my mother's unhappiness. I remember so many times when I could have done more to comfort her. In my sophomore year of college, I learned to meditate and slowly began to emerge from my shell of protection. Meditation opened the door to dealing with my grief effectively. I'd sit with my eyes closed and the healing tears would flow. One morning, while meditating, I remembered caring for Mom when she had returned from the hospital. I had resented the fact that I had to dress her bed sores when I really wanted to hang out with my friends. I was flooded with guilt and shame as I recalled how selfish I had been. I remembered the story Mom had told me about my grandfather who died of throat cancer when she was eight. Before he died, he said to her, Evelyn, remember this, if anything happens to me and you really need me, call and I'll be there for you. When Mom was in college, a young man had broken her heart. She was so distraught that she called out to her father inside herself. She said, suddenly, I felt him standing in my dorm room. I felt so loved by him that I knew everything would be all right. It seemed worth a try, so I cried out to Mom in my mind. I'm sorry, I sobbed over and over again. A change came over the room then. Time stood still, and I felt the cloak of peace spread over me. I heard my mother say, all is understood, all is forgiven. There is no need for any regrets. The weight I had carried around for years seemed released in an instant. I felt a sense of freedom. A few years later, I found myself missing Mom more than I had in years. I was about to marry Tony. The day of my wedding was sunny and glorious. I was caught up in the festivities. Afterwards, Marilyn approached with a tear-streaked face. She wasn't sad. She just needed to talk to me. We found a corner. Do you know anyone named Forche? she asked. That was my mother's maiden name. Marilyn spoke more quietly then. During your wedding ceremony, an incredible thing happened. I saw you and Tony surrounded by a light and a presence that was filled with love for you. It was so beautiful, it made me cry. And I kept feeling that Forche was associated with it. I was too stunned to say anything. Marilyn continued, and there was a message that came for you with it. 
the Presence wanted you to know that you will always be loved, to never doubt that, and that this love will always come to you through your friends. By this time, I, too, was crying, and Marilyn and I held each other. Finally, I understood that death could not break a connection forged in love. To this day, I will sometimes catch a glimpse of something in the eyes of a friend or a loved one, or even my own eyes in a mirror, and I know my mother is still here, loving me.